Hello my friends, welcome to my corner. It seems that these days there is not a whole lot that you can do with $18.71 when it comes to books. You know how it is, if you want to buy one of those new hardcover books, most of the time they are at least about $25. Dollars. Well, something very interesting happened to me the other day. This is what happened. I met my girlfriend after her work and we didn't really have a whole lot of time to spend together. So we were like, what should we do? As usual, I said, you know, we could go to a bookstore. Uh, so we did. We went to a bookstore and when we get there, we see this huge sign there that says blowout sale, everything 90% off. Let me repeat that. Everything 90% off. Can you believe that? I was like, uh, you know, I, I'm either dreaming or uh, I have just died, didn't even realize it, and this is my personal version of heaven or something like that. I went inside, I still couldn't believe it. I was like, okay, so if I grab this book and it says like $10, that means I pay just $1 for that book? Is that, is that the way it works? I, I couldn't believe it. So anyway, I went inside and I found what I am going to show you in this uh, spontaneous book haul. So let me show you what I found for uh, that price that I just mentioned, $18.71. A really nice experiment would be this. Uh, try to guess how many books uh, I got, you know. Uh, I'll show you what I have. So uh, this is totally random order here. I have this book of early Irish myths and sagas by Penguin. I don't know if there's a new addition to this one. I should uh, look that up. But these are the old ones, you know, the the black colored uh, books by Penguin. So I was really happy about this one because um, I, honestly, I don't know much about Irish myths. Um, I do have that book by William Butler Yeats, you know, the classic, but uh, I need to explore that a little bit more. Then this one I thought was fantastic. Look at this. This is a famous uh, volume ahead of all parting, the selected poetry and prose of Rainer Maria Rilke. And it has, of course, uh, selected poems, right? But you also have the German version of the texts right next to them. So it's a bilingual edition. And then it has some nice uh, selections from his prose. I did not own uh, any books by Rilke until this moment. So this was really, really nice for me. And of course, it has the complete texts of the Duino elegies and the sonnets to Orpheus. So this was really amazing. I found this book that I already had by uh, Junichiro Tanisaki, the classic uh, Seven Japanese Stories, right? Or Seven Japanese Tales. That is actually the title. I'm always messing up the titles of books. I always have to check because I, I tend to do that. So I already have this one from Vintage, but I have the older edition. I thought at one point maybe I could, um, you know, update it or something, but I think I'm, I'm probably going to give this as a gift to somebody because I, I do like the you know, version or the edition of the book that I actually read. I was also very lucky to find some books by Raymond Chandler. Uh, there was a summer many years ago that was kind of like the Chandler summer when I read all of his novels and uh, I have fond memories of those but I, I have never reread them and I don't really own copies of most of them so I found here The Little Sister so this is one of them then I found in the same collection by Vintage The Lady in the Lake okay so uh, these are not the most well known right I did have copies of The Big Sleep and Farewell My Lovely but these are, um, you know, the others that I did not have. And then look at this. Okay, the Library of America, first volume of his novels and stories. So this one brings together Pulp Stories, The Big Sleep, Farewell My Lovely, which I already had, but I did not have The High Window. So now I have the stories and that third novel that he published. So I think I would be missing, let's see, uh, playback if I remember correctly and uh, long goodbye. So I'm looking forward to finding those at some point. And look at this, another volume by the Library of America, this one with Edith Wharton's novels, The House of Mirth, The Reef, The Custom of the Country, The Age of Innocence. This one you can tell is a little bit older, you know, than, than the Chandler volume. But still, you know, I thought this is nice and, and it's not expensive. I found one DVD. Uh, this is actually a, a little bit of a box uh, set that brings together Strangers on a Train and North by Northwest by, of course, Alfred Hitchcock. Two DVDs. So I did not have these. I, I do like Hitchcock. So 
I've seen both of these movies. I think uh, North by Northwest I might have seen twice. The other one, Strangers on a Train, I have seen only once. So, you know, it would be a nice experience to uh, check them out once again. Then I have this little book by George Saunders, okay, this uh, classic children's book. I cannot tell you the title because uh, when I say this word, I, I'm going to see if I can show you on it, if my camera cooperates, maybe. Uh, when I say this word, it sounds like I'm saying something else. Okay, there are certain words in the English language that I, I should not say, just in case, you know. So, uh, George Saunders is, I would say he's one of my favorite authors. I had the chance to meet him many years ago. And this is a children's book. Uh, it's kind of in the in a similar vein to that other one he wrote, The Very Persistent Gappers of Rip. Kind of an environmentalist uh, message. Really nice, and I did not have a copy of uh, this one. So I was uh, really, really uh, thrilled to find that and to read it again because it's written in a very, um, in a very nice style. It's like uh, improper English, you know, it's not uh, spelled right because the story is narrated by one of those animals that I told you I cannot say or I should not say. You know, maybe I can say it and, and it doesn't really sound bad, but you know, I'm kind of self, self-conscious about it. So uh, you know how it is. Um, look at this. Also, Modern Library, okay? So this is the best uh, short stories by O. Henry. We read The Gift of the Magi when I was in high school, and that was it, you know? But uh, this one has a lot of stories by him. I can't remember exactly how many of them uh, it says right here, but um, 38 stories, okay, by, by O. Henry. So I want to read more by him after, you know, reading that one and, and just being familiar with that story that, that everybody knows. It's become a classic, you know, like, I don't know, Maupassant's uh, The Necklace or something like that, you know. This uh, book by Penguin, right? The Cistercian World, Monastic Writings of the 12th Century. So it has uh, writings by monks, and my books are falling here, by monks, abbots, and, and you know, people who lived in the monasteries. Uh, letters, sermons, you know, exemplary stories, things like that. I thought it was very interesting. I had not uh, seen this before. So, you know, something to look forward to. Then I found also this uh, album of Isaac Bashevi's Singer. It has, of course, uh, pictures, documents, things like that. I think if you buy the box set of the Library of America that collects his uh, short stories, this album uh, comes with that. I do not have the complete set. I found two of the volumes of short stories. I cannot remember exactly which. I think one of them is the first one, and the other one is the one that has the collection uh, Friend of Kafka. But uh, I did not have this album because I did not buy the box set. I just found those two. You know, I'm missing one of them. But uh, I thought it was a, a nice uh, document to have. Then uh, a book that I wanted to have that I had been looking for for a very long time, uh, William Faulkner's The Unvanquished. This was one of my favorite reads by Faulkner. It's not one of his most famous books, you know. Uh, it's not like As I Lay Dying or The Sound and the Fury. But I thought it was a really, really good novel. It's a collection of stories that when you read them, you know, you have kind of a novel, sort of like Go Down Moses, but a lot more cohesive, a lot easier to, to follow and to read, a lot more enjoyable, I would say, at the, at the level of just the, the pleasure of reading the text. I found also Sleep of Memory by Patrick Modiano. This, I would say, is not one of his best novels. It's a um, I think he, he uh, published two, two more after this one, so it's a relatively recent book. And as I said, you know, I don't consider it one of his best uh, novels, but it was still a fun book to read, very good, and I would like to read it again, you know, since I did not have that much of a good impression of it. Sometimes it's just a matter of giving it another chance, and with some authors, Modiano being one of them, I uh, do that. Also, A Hero of Our Time by Mikhail Yarmontov. When I read this book a very long time ago, I did not read this translation, or this edition in particular. I actually found the Oxford edition, which also comes with a brief text by Pushkin that is related to a hero of our time. So, um, And I did not have a copy of this book, so now that I have this one, I can read it in a different translation and see how it compares, or if my memories of the book, because this was a long time ago, you know? I don't really remember a whole lot about the book, so... That's another reason to uh, reread it. This uh, hardcover by Leclesio, it has uh, Medriasis and 
to the icebergs, to uh, brief texts. This is like uh, non-fiction, okay? So it's they're not novellas or anything like that. I don't really know what they are about. The description does not really give much away, which is good sometimes. Medriasis, of course, is like the dilation of the pupils. So I uh, I would say that it has to do something, you know, a little bit with the act of, of seeing or, or watching things. And then to the icebergs, I know that deals with uh, Le Clésio's response to the poetry of Henri Michaud. So I'm not familiar with Henri Michaud, I'll be, you know, honest about that. So uh, it would, should be an interesting, you know, book to check out. And then I have this really big one, Los Parques Nacionales de Venezuela. This one is not for me, this one is for my girlfriend who uh, wants to make a gift, but, uh, you know, I still managed to, to get it. I went twice to this um, bookstore. They had the sale that lasted two days first day I went with my girlfriend and then I was like okay the next day I should go with my mother and my brother so that they can see if they can find something they're interested in and that's when I found the Chandler books and the Hilka and all of those because those were in a section that I had not uh, seen from this um, from this bookstore so anyway I just wanted to share that with you because I thought wow uh, th that's probably the best sale that I will encounter in my entire life I had to exercise a huge amount of self-control while I was there because these were not the best books that I that I saw there you know usually when it's like that you have a, such a big sale everything is gone in the first hour or two this was late in the afternoon. They were about to close, actually, when I went, and they still had a lot of wonderful books left. So it was really, really one of those times when life surprises you, and I was very happy about it. So anyway, uh, have you read any of these books? Do you have any questions about them? I'm, I have read some of them, and I'm going to read the others at some point. So uh, just let me know if you have experienced any of them, or as usual, if you have any questions, comments, recommendations, recipes, anything. You know I always like that. Thank you so much for stopping by, and have a wonderful day.